Good morning and welcome to Rising. We've got an excellent show for you today, which includes some breaking news that we're going to get to right off the bat. This just in, Kamala Harris has apparently picked Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz to be her vice president. He was seen as a dark horse candidate just some weeks ago. This small town Midwestern Midwesterner skyrocketed to the forefront, beating Governor Josh Shapiro, Andy Bashir, and others to become Harris's number two. Some close to her saying it was ultimately a vibe thing. Now, in the last few weeks, Waltz has hit the ground running for uh, auditioning for the role for Harris's Veep. Let's watch some of that. How are you going to build a water treatment plant in a town of 400 if you don't have a collective effort at it? So I have to tell you, they scream socialism. We just build roads and we build schools and we build prosperity into this. Their whole plan is to go backwards, to give tax cuts to the wealthy. And look, it was so surprising. You know, these super successful Donald Trump who inherited $400 million and then proceeded to fail at everything. Uh, middle America, you earn it, but you know what? You're not on your own. Neighbors help neighbors. And, and I will, uh, this one bothers me. I heard you talking about punching back at the bullies. They see people less fortunate as scapegoats and, and you know, punchlines for their mm -hmm. jokes. We see them as neighbors. And I said it with my mom, my dad dies when my little brother's young, we're teenagers. We get Social Security survivor benefits. I'm all for pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. We didn't have any boots. Social Security was the boots, and we pulled ourselves up, and we paid that back. And I think J.D. Vance gets none of that. You know, it's, it's the aw shucks, I'm from here or whatever. So uh, my hillbilly cousins did not go to Yale, but I'll tell you what they did. They contributed to our community, and they're proud of it. Waltz continued taking swipes at potential rival Trump's VP pick J.D. Vance. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that's what J.D. Vance's stick is, talking about guns. I guarantee you he can't shoot pheasants like I can. And that's a part of saying, but you know what? I guarantee I don't want weapons of war in classrooms, and there's no reason that you can't have reasonable restrictions around that without infringing on your Second Amendment. He's going in there throwing these things around that makes a difference. Democrats need to go into these places. I'm going to go in every Legion Hall I can go into and say, Vice President Harris will not cut your benefits. I sat in the VA committee for 12 years to increase those benefits with Republicans like Jeff Miller from Florida. This guy wants to cut them because it's in the 2025. We need to be bolder on that. We need to go out and say that. And of course, Waltz is known for propelling Democrats leading insult against the GOP. It's weird. These are these are weird people on the other side. They want to take books away. They want to be in your exam room. That's that's what it comes down to. And don't, you know, get sugarcoating this. These are weird ideas. Listen to them speak. Listen to how they talk about things. Listen to how your previous guests were right. Like you said, they've told them that they shouldn't talk about race. They can't help it. It is built into their DNA because there yeah. is no plan. There's no health care plan. There's no health care plan. There's nothing to do on this. They want to take away our alliances and leave Russia to do whatever they want. Look, they are bad on foreign policy. They are bad on the environment. They certainly have no health care plan. And they keep talking about the middle class that, as I said, a robber baron real estate guy and a venture capitalist trying to tell us they understand yeah. who we are. They don't know who we are. And if vibes are what Harris wants, Waltz is giving. Here he is with his daughter, Hope, at a fair in Minnesota. Watch. Every year we as a family do something old and something new. I get to pick something, a classic, the old mill ride, to do that. Um, and then Hope gets to pick something new. I think we're going to go do the slingshot. Which I don't know what it is, and they're keeping it from me. But then we're going to go get some food, corn dog. I'm vegetarian. Turkey then. And turkey's then, meat. Not in Minnesota, turkey's special. And um, we will go do some of those things and report back. So I like Waltz. I'm very happy, Ravi. This is a very good morning. And yeah, a lot congratulations. of people the vibes. Yes, thanks, Ravi. I think the vibes are there, but I also think he's someone who's good on policy and good at talking about the issues. I'm just very happy all around with this pick. As I, I come to all of our viewers from the Midwest, from Iowa, uh, Waltz represents a kind of culture that I think has, has died away, sadly, in a lot of other parts of America. There's community here. He talks about neighbors. And I remember when I was a kid, Neighbors did take care of neighbors, but that quickly went away, uh, maybe just before the recession. But I grew up on the East Coast in the tri-state area, and we didn't have the culture that's still alive and well in the Midwest. And I think even if you're not Midwestern, 
I think people want that for America. So as much as he has good vibes, because he's a state champion football coach, he was a teacher. He, when he was elected to Congress, he quickly became the president of the freshman class. He's a guy that people like, but he also has a track record of delivering on policy as governor. And I think that made him a really good pick. Mm. Well, we're all three of us uh, Midwesterners. Obviously, I grew up in uh, Michigan, and uh, so I can identify with the vibe, even as I have some uh, quibbles with his choice. I mean, I understand from your perspective, yes, I agree, he's an excellent choice. He is clearly a uh, more progressive um, leaning uh, person on, uh, on really on it, every issue. I actually, I think he's probably arguably more committedly progressive than Kamala Harris is. Um, so I, I'm sure the left is happy with this choice. I think politically speaking, it doesn't make the most sense to me, doesn't make as much sense to me as picking um, Josh Shapiro, being that Josh Shapiro is the governor of the must-win state for Kamala, and he's very popular there uh, with moderates and Republicans and um, everyone else. Uh, you know, if he improved even slightly her chances of winning that state, I know you, you think that Tim Waltz will, uh, will be well-received by the people in Pennsylvania as well, and that very well might be the case, but it's just that it's their governor and it's the must-win state. But, uh, you know, I, I think in some ways this might be uh, actually Kamala doing something a little bit similar to, um, to, to Hillary in 2016, and we know how that turned out, is picking, you know, a folksy guy, a likable guy, but not a guy who's going to, you know, who brings so much star power himself that he's going to overshadow her. Hillary Clinton picked um, Tim Kaine, senator from Virginia, you know, a name we've is not really uh, one we commonly hear from again, you know, not someone who was going to clash with her in any way, was not a massive plus or a minus, was just a guy on the ticket with her, was not going to overshine her. Um, uh, you know, Tim Waltz I, I also seems folksy, relatable, speaks well on TV, will perform well in a debate, I will do well on a campaign trail. I'm, I'm, not at all, I'm not at all knocking his, you know, performance as a political figure or a, a talking head. I, I think he's got that down. I think he'll rep the ticket well. So I think it's, you know, it's hardly a, a bad choice from that direction. Um, however, it does, I, I think, suggest or will suggest maybe to a lot of uh, you know, the Republican, never Trump, moderate, centrist people who are maybe looking at the Harris ticket and saying, could I get on board? Is this the guy that brings them on board? This guy who's, you know, even more um, to the left on, uh, on energy and environmental issues and, uh, and a lot of economic issues than she is. Um, is that really going to be the right sell? I don't know. I think it will be because I think a lot of Kamala's positions there seem like coastal elitism to me. It seems like more establishment Democrat politics to satisfy the corporate donors of the party. Tim Waltz has never been that guy. And Rahm Emanuel and the Democratic establishment really didn't like him when he was running for his House seat. But the way he talks about delivering on policy for the working class is not in terms of being far left or being progressive. As he puts it, they scream socialism. We just build roads and we build schools. And that's something that's actually proven to win in a very Republican district when he first ran in 2002 and 2004 in Minnesota. So that's a district that Trump won in 2020, 53.8 percent to 43.7 percent. That's also a district that Waltz won 49.5% for him and 47.17% against him. So he's proven to win. When uh, he first ran in Minnesota won, this was a district that was favored for Republicans in prior elections by seven points. And then he won uh, in this district that's 60% uh, Republican, 35% Democrats in terms of voter registration, according to the Minnesota Secretary of State website. So he's putting up good numbers. He had to get Republicans to vote for him to win that vote share. So I think that is really huge that he's someone who's proven to win in a very conservative district and, and win with a margin that required getting conservatives to turn out. In that sense, I think he's safer than Shapiro, who's only served one term as governor and hasn't really proven to win in in handedly 
Republican districts. So I think well, I mean, he a, a run, lot of his Shapiro won in the, the whole state, won. right? I mean, he won, you know, instead of winning one district that his, you know, demographics and political makeup has changed dramatically in 20 years, Shapiro won the entire state, and it's the state. You know, Kamala doesn't need to just win Waltz's district. She needs to, she's going to win the state of Minnesota, probably, in, you know, in all likelihood, but she needs to win the state of Pennsylvania. So I think that's the comparison is to the whole state. Yeah, and I, I think Walt is someone who can win in Pennsylvania, given that he's yeah. popular enough to become the president of his freshman class. He's also got a military background. Uh, when he retired from the National Guard after 24 years of service. And when he retired, uh, he was at the rank of command sergeant major. So he's the highest ranking enlisted man to ever serve in the U.S. Congress. This is a guy who can really make the case to a lot of working Americans who like the, the, yes, the vibe of someone who's a state football champion and a teacher, but also someone who talks about political issues as if they're common sense. Yeah. And I think that is is someone who can campaign in Pennsylvania and win people over. But I, I'm not confident Josh Shapiro would have been able to campaign in the Midwest and win people over in the way that Tim Waltz has proven to. And so whatever it came down to, whether it's that Shapiro served in the IDF, that progressives like Waltz and young people like Waltz, and you need those people for manpower to win an election, whether it's on social media or walking the streets and knocking doors, that's a really important group to have behind you. Whatever it was, I think the country's better for this decision because Shapiro has been governor for a year. We don't really know what he's capable of. He's gotten some good things done in the short span that he's been governor. But I think Tim Waltz proving to provide free lunch for kids at schools, proven to invest in infrastructure, and proven to win handedly and have a trifecta in Minnesota in a way that hasn't pissed off Republicans in a state. And a lot of Republicans are happy with the programs he's put forward. I think that's someone that can win in Pennsylvania wow. and a lot of other states like Georgia and maybe even North Carolina. Well, we're going to continue talking about this. A lot more to get into. Going to get some reactions from political folks about the pick. Stay tuned. More rising in just a minute.